Hi everyone, Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Arts Studio. And I'm back home and will be for the next few weeks, so I thought I'd do some catch up with some videos and talk about some of the questions that have come up during the year I've been on the road traveling and talking with students and vending at shows and, and trying to answer some of the questions that come up on a fairly frequent basis. One of the things that people always ask me about are inks. Now, I love, of course, everybody loves, you know, our favorite ink tints pencils. Yay, hooray for ink tints. You know, they're always going to be my standby. And as we know that this is dried ink in pencil form. Um, so I pulled out a red. Maybe I'll use this in as a contrast today to some of the inks that we're using. And yes, it's Christmas time, so I, I decided to use red ink in order to be able to demo um, with all of the products that I have here. Typically, an industry standard, at least in the quilting world, for coloring on fabric with ink has been this, Sukaniko ink. Let me turn this around so that you can see it. Um, this is a wonderful standby. If you see this, it does say it is for fabric. Um, it goes on beautifully. I will be demoing this today as the standard to judge the rest of these inks with. So I'm going to put that aside for a minute and show you what else I have brought to the table. Um, these are all purchased, by the way, at Dick Blick's, my favorite all-time place to get art supplies. Um, not, not knocking anybody else. They've just been able to give me great deals lately. So here is Edding 400. It is considered to be a permanent marker. Um, you know, many of you know that I use Sukuniko's Fabrico markers, but I'll tell you there's been a quirk problem with them since COVID, and that is sometimes there's literally different colors in either end of the tips of the pens. One of these days I'll do a quick demo on that and show you what I'm talking about. But because of it, I've been trying to look for a different uh, assortment of markers that we might be able to use instead of Fabrico markers that are permanent and washable. So the other marker that I've picked up is Pantone. It's a marker. Um, along with that, I've also picked up Pantone's, uh, let's see what this says. It's their marker ink. Hang on, let me get the English version here. There you go. Marker ink. So I'm assuming it's the same stuff that's in the marker itself. Um, now the reason I've picked all these out is because they've all claimed to be permanent or waterproof. Now that is going to be the proof in the pudding today, because once I give these, uh, do these demos, I am going to heat set everything and I am going to throw it in the wash. One of the other things that I will be doing today is also using my fabric medium as a coat on sections of the inks that we put down to see how it fares with the fabric medium versus without the fabric medium. Now, the other two that we're going to be testing today is, uh, I think it's pronounced Daler Roni FW Acrylic Ink. This looks very interesting. Um, most of the time I find that anything that is acrylic works very well with fabric medium and fabric painting. And then last but not least, uh, I don't know, I think I picked this up just because I thought the name looked cool. Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India ink. Uh, this is bright red. Although honestly, if you look at these, you know, we've got, we've got some very different reds here, you know, from one end of the spectrum to the other, but that's, that's part of the fun with working with this. Okay. So without further ado, I'm just going to plop myself down. I'm going to film myself doing this and then I'll um, obviously edit later. Um, but I do want to talk about, first of all, my all time favorite which is Sukuniko ink. And I'm just gonna use this directly out of the bottle and just show you how beautiful this stuff is. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit up here. That way it will stay as the standard for the, everything below and give us something to compare with as far as going forward. Um, truly, the these inks are very, very permanent. Um, I, ha I hesitate to say this because all of you who have taken my classes or have watched my videos know that I am so adamant about heat setting everything. But let me stick my neck out and say that with Sukuniko inks, um, I think that they're so permanent that you might even be able to get away with not heat setting. Now I'm going to wash my brush in between each one of these 
mainly just to get rid of any potential contamination. You know, as I always say in class, you know, give it a good wash, but also, you know, get your brush good and dry in between each one. Let's start with the markers. I'm just going to pull them out in order. Let's just take a look at them here real quick. This says it's water resistant on virtually all materials, hence why I picked this up. And let's see what we got here. Maybe it's just a screw top. Aha. And these pins, they all fool you. Oops. Actually, I unscrewed the whole thing. Now, that's interesting. This this says it's refillable. Ah, there's another key I'm looking for because it gets really expensive after a while to constantly be buying new pins. So the other thing I'd like to see is if these kind of products are, in fact, permanent and work well with fabric, I actually think I may start carrying these as a, as a, as something to sell because then you can always go back and refill them. And that's a heck of a lot cheaper than constantly buying pins. Okay. So we're just going to come in here and I'm going to draw a box. And in that box, I'll just go ahead and I'm not going to color the entire thing. What I will do is I'll put enough down. I'm just laying some color down, no big deal. And yes, I know I'm getting outside the line, but who cares, this is just a test. But I've laid enough down, and I'm gonna be frank with you, right off the bat, the thing that I'm really impressed with, well, there's a tiny bit of bleeding, but it's not bad. Let me just, just as a test, let me just hold, ah, okay. So yeah, it does bleed if you hold it down too much. Okay, so that may be a problem, um, but at least we know that ahead of time. I will say that these sharp strokes, there is a tiny bit of bleeding, but it's not as bad as saying using a Sharpie or one of the others. Okay, so now we've got that one. We're gonna set that one aside. Um, I'm gonna put the fabric medium down after I'm sure that everything is dried. Um, just again, to kind of keep the, the test very consistent. Now this next one, Pantone marker. Let's see what it looks like. I think this is a dual tip. Let's see what the other end looks like. Ah, sure is. Good chisel on one end and a nice uh, pointy end on the other. So again, same thing. I'm just gonna draw a box here, um, color it in. Uh, same thing, a happy, there's a bit of bleeding, just like the other one but not nearly as bad as one might think. Well, I'm just going to put this out here and hold it down. Yeah, it bleeds a little, but again, not nearly as bad as it could. Um, again, this is a consideration with any fabric marker or any kind of marker that you use is how bad does it bleed when, when you put your stuff down. Okay, now let's move down to the Sequinico inks. Uh, hopefully it's all visible. Let me just kind of push this there and make sure that it's visible. I'm going to open each one of these individually. Oh gosh, this actually has a dropper. I'm going to put this down. By the way, I don't know if you've noticed, I've got a piece of plastic here um, on, underneath my foam board. And what I think I'm going to do here is just grab some of this off with my brush um, I'll just dip it in here. Oh, now that's a bleeder. Oh, no, that's Sukuniko ink. Oop, put the wrong spot. Let me make sure I'm doing this correctly here. Sorry about that. This is Pantone. All right, it goes over here. Um, we'll make note of that. Yeah, boy, how duty. This is bleeding. This is bleeding really bad. Now, I'm still not going to rule this out because I can tell you that if with some of these bad bleeders, I've actually done this with the uh, Sukuniko ink, that when they tend to bleed, then what I will often do is mix it 50-50 with fabric medium, and that sometimes stops the bleed. Right now, let's just see if it's color fast. If it is color fast, then we'll come back in and test for the... Um, bleeding by, or prevent bleeding by using fabric medium. Okay, let me clean my brush again. See, good habits, everybody. Just just stay with good habits and you will keep your stuff as long as possible. All right, now Dr. PH, I wonder what the PH stands for. 
Well, now that doesn't look like bright red. That looks like bright orange, but hey, let's not quibble about the color today. Um, let me drag some of this over into its little box. Oh, another bleeder. Not as bad as the Pantone. Oh, it still moves, though. Um, you know, if any of y'all have ever worked with silk, you know, silk bleeds, and that's why you always wear uh, use a resist. Um, I've not tried resists yet with cotton. I mean, the resist that I use, obviously, is embroidery thread, but that's mainly to keep people inside the line. But I'm just looking at this real quick. Now, look at the Pantone. Look at the Bombay ink. Yeah, it bled a little bit, but nothing as bad as this. All right. Let's try the last one, which is Daler Roni FW Acrylic. Um, I'm really counting on this one because, boy, this is the other thing. They've got tons and tons of colors. And lately, I've started getting really lazy. I don't want to have to blend and make my own color. I want to, I want to have it all nice and ready to go so I don't have to think about it. Um, so here we go. This is the acrylic. This is why I'm really kind of hoping this is going to, ah, uh, uh, well, shoot. I see some bleeding. Yeah, it's definitely bleeding. I mean, I think all of these will, will, will test underneath the, the area below and see if it bleeds as bad when used with fabric medium. And I think what I'll do is I'll put the fabric medium down first in a square, um, and then we'll we'll test it. So so far, I got to be honest with y'all. Um, Doctor Phil's is definitely, and not only that, the color saturation. Not crazy about Pantone. In fact, I'm not crazy about the way the marker looks, and I'm not crazy about the ink. Now this is Sukuniko. We'll just kind of X through that, and not pay any attention to it. I'm not going to put anything beside there. Um, but now let's go ahead. I'm going to put all this aside. I'll wash my brush out. Sorry for the elbow in your view. And I'm going to pour some fabric medium. Yeah, I was working here earlier. Man, I've got a ton of new stuff coming out the first of your year, y'all. Stay tuned on my website. If you uh, have subscribed to my newsletter, great. Um, you will see that first. If you would like to subscribe to my newsletter, go to www.medinadomarts.com. It's listed in the description. It's listed on my YouTube page. Find it. Go hit subscribe to the newsletter. I typically don't make these kind of announcements on YouTube. I typically make them through my newsletter just to kind of keep the, the noise at bay so I don't inundate you guys with stuff. All right. So I'm going to come down here below. And I'm going to paint an area. And actually, I'm kind of glad my brush still has a little bit. It shows where, where I'm putting the fabric medium. Um, do that across the board for all of these. And again, this is, I don't care if there's stuff down there. It's not enough. But it's at least enough on this white for me to see where I'm putting the fabric medium. Paint that first. Get a good coverage. I've had a lot of fun with Phil's class lately, by the way, y'all. I don't know if you've seen my... YouTube videos on fills. Uh, I have finessed the process quite a bit from those original videos. Uh, did great at the, my class in Plano at the best little quilt retreat center in Plano. Wonderful place. I've got to make a plug for them. They're a teacher's dream place to teach. Love going there. Pam and Chuck are wonderful hosts and hostess. Um, they 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 run a great shop. They've recently become handy quilter distributors, um, and I wish them all the luck in in their endeavors. But they're good people, and it's a great place to go and and uh, have a retreat. Okay, so let's start back now with the Daler. Um, let me grab just a, again, just a little bit here. Uh, just go dip it direct. Now I'm going to go in first where I've put the fabric medium. And wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I can tell the fabric medium is keeping it from bleeding. Uh, again, the next question will be is what does it do when it is heat set and washed, which I'm going to let all of this dry and then um, I'll do part two of this. 
Um, that makes me happy. I do see a tiny bit of bleeding here, but within the area itself. Now, one thing I got to focus on, um, you know, when people see me do this, yes, it does change the tonality a bit. It looks slightly more pastel than here. Um, that's to be expected. What I would probably do is, if I were doing this in a in a piece of artwork, I would put a first layer down, then probably come back after it's dried and do a second layer to deepen the color. All right, let's go on to Dr. Phil. I'm calling it Dr. Phil. I know that's not really what it is, but it just seems like appropriate for Dr. PH. All right, it's got Dr. PH here. I'm gonna stick that there so I don't mess anything up. Inside now, oh yeah. Now this one's definitely, definitely, definitely bleeding inside the fabric medium. Yeah, and it's going outside too. So Dr. Phil seems to work great on its own. Doesn't look like it plays well with fabric medium. Um, you know, I could probably compensate for that. Would I teach it in a class? Maybe not. Um, and by the way, that is another requirement when I'm teaching, um, or rather when I'm testing. It needs to pass the, the teaching test. Is, is it something I can pass on to y'all in a class and have you want and jump up and down for joy? Yeah, no, I don't like that. Don't like it at all, y'all. So if I were to use it, I would probably use it straight. So we're going to be very interested and see what happens when this gets washed. Okay, last but not least, Pantone. Now, this is going to be very curious. Since I'm kind of already got a slight bias against it already, I'll just pull... I drop some there and just pull this off from underneath. I don't like wasting, even if it is for testing. Ah, uh, it's bleeding. No doubt about. Oh yeah, yeah, it's bleeding. No, no, no. I'm almost. I'm almost pretty sure Pantone is out of the running. Um, way too much bleeding for my like. Um, it does smooth the color out. I, I like that aspect of putting it with the fabric medium. But as you can tell, man, that's that's like running big time. So that's kind of one of the things that as soon as it happens, you know, I, I, I got to rule it out. All right, last but not least, one last little thing here to do before I shut the video down and go off to let this dry is um, with the fabric medium that I have here, let's do this. Let's just kind of put it on top of half of the marker here. Yep, you know, you can tell I'm using my um, uh, pearlescent because it's giving it a nice shimmery look, which of course that's why I do it. I love shimmer. Ooh, and wait until you guys see. There's another product I'm bringing in. I haven't gotten them all in. As soon as I do, I'll test with it. Uh, but my ladies in Plano loved it. If you like sparkle, you're going to love this new product. No, I'm not going to tell you what it is until I get it all in. But it's a surprise and well worth it, according to my lovely students down in Plano. All right, last but not least, I'm really happy. I think of all the stuff that I've, I'm looking at here, the, the, the Eddings 400 um, pins, I'm kind of liking. Um, not too bleedy. Um, very good, consistent color. Seems to play well with the fabric medium. But as we all know, the proof is in the pudding when I put it in the wash and bring it out and see how well these are faded. Okay, so stay tuned. Part two will come just as soon as I've ironed and washed and we'll show you the results.